I hope you did get a chance to hear my dad, but more importantly, I hope you watched the debate uh, earlier this week, and I hope that you are taking advantage of something that I think is really extraordinary about this campaign, just how much we can hear from the candidates themselves. So watching the various debates, listening to the candidates' speeches, going online, you know, to HillaryClinton.com, to all the candidates' websites, so that we as voters can make our own assessments about whom we really believe will bring the progress that we want to see on whatever is important to us, you know, what will come after, getting rid of no child left behind, or what we'll do to help make college and graduate school more affordable and accessible. You know, I'm really proud that my mom set up for universal health care in 93 and 94 before it was fashionable. And I'm really proud that she's been... and that she's been standing up for it ever since. But when it didn't work out the first time, she didn't just give up. She kept working on trying to expand healthcare. So she got something passed called the Children's Health Insurance Program in 1997 that now covers more than 140,000 kids right here in Ohio. I'm also really proud of my mother's record of bipartisanship in the Senate, which is something that is really distinctive to her of anyone who's running. But she's absolutely stood her ground and fighting against the effort to privatize Social Security, in fighting for a higher you know, gas mileage standards, for instance, and fighting for more early childhood education. But she's found common ground where she could, particularly on issues that affect our veterans. So she's worked extensively with Senator Lindsey Graham, who's a really conservative Republican from South Carolina, and one of the people who prosecuted my father in the 90s. So not exactly someone you might think would be a ready ally. But she's found common ground with him on standing up to support our men and women, to extending the Family and Medical Leave Act to veterans' families so that veterans' families are able to take care of their veterans when they come home. I'm so proud that my mom was the first person running to talk about green-collar jobs and to talk about you know, seeing our fight against global warming as not only something that we needed to do for our environmental security and our physical security, because it's not good for us that we're so dependent, on the oil producing countries, but also to see it as an opportunity to really grow our economy longer term. And so she said that she will take away the tax breaks that the oil and gas companies received in the 2005 energy bill, something that she voted against initially. Another contrast is people think about whom to support. When oil was already over $60 a barrel, she didn't think that oil companies needed our tax subsidies. And then to institute a windfall profits tax on oil companies now that oil is close to or over $100 a barrel. And that'll generate about $50 billion. And she'll use that in a few ways. One, to invest aggressively in clean renewable energy technologies to help drive down the costs of what we already know work in wind and solar to make it more affordable. But also to invest aggressively in geothermal and hydrogen and hydroelectric and biodiesel and biofuel. I'm really proud that my mom wrote legislation that the president finally signed that raised the maximum Pell Grant level to $5,400, and that she wrote legislation that made Pell Grants available year-round. But we know that we need to do so much more. So what is she proposing? Well, one, doubling the maximum Pell Grant to $10,800, so twice what she raised it to, and expanding eligibility so that more people can take advantage of Pell Grants. Sending to families or individuals, if you're putting yourself through school, a $3,500 tax credit per year that you're in school. Expanding opportunities for national service. I'm really proud of my dad for starting AmeriCorps. She wants to expand the number of people who can participate in AmeriCorps and then raise to $10,000 what you can earn per year for up to two years of service. So a total of $20,000 tax-free that you can use to help pay for college or graduate school or to help pay off college or graduate school. She's committed to getting rid of the FAFSA form. She was the first person to say that she would get rid of the FAFSA form. Because we never want anyone to be dissuaded from applying for aid because of how cumbersome the process is. So saying to people, if you're applying for yourselves individually or for families, you know, on your tax forms, you just check a box. And the government will send you what level of aid you qualify for. So I think on the economy and on health care and then on what she'll do for our foreign policy, which absolutely is partly about ending the war in Iraq, but is about so much more. 
you know, she has a more compelling plan and a more compelling record than anyone really. <laughs>